obviously a lot more attention given to one Dalvin Cook uh, and the running back class. Uh, we went through a period of time, Bo, as you well know, where the running back was devalued in the NFL. You figured, hey, if you got the offensive front, wear them out for two or three years. We don't really need to draft a running back high. Uh, Melvin Gordon, Ezekiel Elliott, some success of some recent running backs has kind of turned the trend back uh, toward a more traditional way. And we've got a couple top backs, probably three that are going to be taken in the first yeah. 20 or 25 picks. Your, your thoughts about the running back class? Well, it's one of the deepest we've seen in decades, and I'm glad to see the bat running back position uh, brought back. Um, you know, I'm a big, um, I kind of, I argue a lot with the running back never going away. I, you know, if the talent isn't there, you're not going to go high. I think it was 2009, we didn't have a first round wide receiver. Now the second half round came around, I think we had about 14. But when you kind of think if the talent's not there, you're just not going to kind of meet the need. And that's what it's been like for quite a while with the running back's position. But this year, that's really kind of turned the corner. And again, we have just a plethora of top running backs and you mentioned the three I mean we're going to talk Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey and then you've still got a deep list Kareem Hunt, Alvin Kamari, um, Joe Mixon considered one of the top backs just some off the field issues that he's going to have to contend to and at the end of the day I really don't think that's going to affect him you know I know that they uh, you know right now publicly you know they did a poll where you know they said you know 87 percent of teams or something in you know, a fan base would not want him but we all know and it could be wrong, it could be right, but once these guys suit up and they're doing good things for your football team on Sunday, these things just kind of fall to the wayside. We saw with Tyreek Hill, you know, I mean, he had some issues, and uh, like I said, once he started scoring touchdowns with the Chiefs, now he's doing autograph signings in, in Chicago. He's had his own T-shirt sale, so like I said, things change quickly. As long as you can play, but uh, it's a great, great deep running back class, and uh, I'm excited to kind of see where these guys are going to go. Mark, I'm kind of interested, though, the, you talked about how we possibly NFL teams view these guys and they kind of, you know, put them down a notch. And this is a very heavy defensive class. We know, you know, most of these GMs, they really do cherish the idea of, you know, building in the trenches and they're going to have a lot of talent to kind of go there. So it's going to be curious to see how much these running backs possibly do slip. I mean, you could see an Alvin Kamara maybe go in the fourth round. I mean, it's, it, you know, he's ranked a lot higher in terms of how good he is. But it's going to be interesting since there's just so many if that's going to be kind of the motto next week when Thursday night in the Friday night rolls around if these guys are going to get pushed back to Saturday. Especially coming out of the SEC, I view Fournette as almost a guy that has to have the offense built around him. He's almost a traditional eye-back, tailback, Herschel Walker, Bo Jackson guy that uh, really is the focal point of the offense. Dalvin Cook, the focal point of the offense potentially, but a guy that can come out of the backfield, catch passes a little bit more versatile. And then you got on the opposite end of the spectrum from Fournette to a certain de degree, Christian McCaffrey, where if everything comes together for him and he transitions from college to the pro game, hey, he's going to be a jack of all trades, a guy that can line up in the slot, can carry the football 15 times, can hurt you in the return game, do a lot of different things if he reaches his potential. So who would you take if you, if you were going to take a running back and you had that first pick to take a running back, who would you go with? I would go with Dalvin Cook. I think five years from now, Dalvin Cook's going to be the guy that we label as a pure running back. I mean, I think he's the modern day guy for this particular class. I mean, like you said, Fournette, um, a bigger body, a little bit more um, style different. And then McCaffrey. I mean, the, the biggest thing I look when I look at McCaffrey is when they said he's kind of like a Reggie Bush. And then I think Reggie Bush, and I'm like, well, who reminded me of Reggie Bush before Reggie Bush came along? And I thought of Peter Wark. Amazingly dynamic collegiate players. But did we ever see that amazing talent at the next level? And that's what I kind of get hindered on when I see McCaffrey. You're going to be able to line him up in a lot of positions. But he's not going to be a guy who's going to be a bell cow. I don't ever envision him being a guy that's going to get, you know, a, a, you know, a week by week, 25, 20 carry game. I don't think you're going to get that. But that's not who he is. But I think five years from now, if we say, hey, who has the most yards rushing? Who's the guy that's kind of the running back? I, I would say Dalvin Cook. And that's, you know, that's what I put my money on right now. If I'm wrong, we'll find out five years from now. But like I said, I just think Cook is the most complete back he can do everything he can catch out of the backfield he's explosive he can break tackles he can do so many dynamic things and I think that's where he kind of is a little bit better of a pass catcher than Fournette and I think he's a lot better runner than McCaffrey 
Yeah, I like the Dunn-Bush comparison because it seems as though when those guys transition, and they both had decent NFL careers, but when they transition, they're not going to necessarily get you the tough yards between the tackles. They're not going to move the pile. They're not going to drag a tackler two and three yards. Therefore, the athleticism that they displayed in college when they were typically the best athlete on the field or at least one of the two or three best out of 22 players on the field doesn't translate when they're just another athlete on the field. Right. Uh, and, and so maybe McCaffrey's going to have some issues in the NFL. But we, we, we hope for the best for Christian McCaffrey, an upstanding guy uh, on and off the field. So Penn State, Chris Godwin's a guy that really impressed me when I watched him play. And, Bo, I take this more from the standpoint of I cover college football. I watch these players produce on the field. I'm not necessarily watching it from the standpoint of how does this translate to the next level? Is this guy a good enough athlete? Does he have the body frame to translate to the NFL? All those things. I'm just looking at does he produce in college? I cover college football. Chris Godwin's a guy that dominated at his position at Penn State against uh, some future NFL players. I, I was pretty impressed with him, but he seems to not be a top, top-notch wide receiver target. Yeah, you know, and I, I'm so glad you like him because uh, I kind of fell pleasantly uh, in love with him, uh, you know, through the process. And, uh, you know, I think I saw him, I scouted him three times. And during that process, I mean, each time I walked away more, you know, you know, excited than the previous visit. And, you know, what you're going to love about him is he reminds me personally of an Anquan Bolden, a Sterling Sharp type wide receiver. And he's got a little bit thicker base. He's a possession type guy, but we saw at the combine, he ran a 4-4-2. And when he ran that 4-4-2 mark, I put my hands up. I'm like, man, this guy did himself some good. The biggest question mark was going to be, is this guy a 4-6-9? Is he a 4-7 type receiver? Because he doesn't look like he's fast. But he proved at the combine that the Jets are there. He can definitely show that explosiveness. And uh, I think, and I could be wrong because, you know, I, I'm getting in the middle of so much, but I, I think I have him ranked fifth on my receiver, uh, you know, rankings thing because I'm that high on him. Um, you know, I, I've seen him play, so I just, not that I'm right, but, you know, you got to, I always, some of the scouts that I've worked with over the years, they say you have to trust your own eyes. So, I mean, walking away from watching Chris Godfrey at, at Godwin and you know I think the USC game I mean you know he's lit it up there and that was a fantastic game obviously no little defense so most of the offensive guys look great but you know you took advantage of what you did and I thought he capitalized on that and he's been capitalizing since his last game was fantastic and then he went you know he goes to the combine and he really does himself so well so I'm glad you like him because I'm very high on Chris Godwin so it's a quarterback driven league uh, we don't have a guy that we can point to and say, yeah, that's John Elway, that's Cam Newton, somebody like that. Uh, but between Mitchell Trubisky, Deshaun Watson, any of the other guys down the ranks, is there anybody that you like a little bit better than than the 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 pack or that's been advertised to this point? Um, you know, I, I think I like the guys that you kind of mentioned in the top pack. You know, you I mean obviously Deshaun Kaiser, Trubisky, Deshaun Watson, um, uh, Davis, David Webb. Um, and then you got Patrick Mahomes from Texas Tech. I mean, I kind of like the web, you know, I've seen him down at the senior bowl. He was a guy that I was excited to see when I got down there. I, you know, you think, he, you know, he played behind Jared Goff for, you know, three years. So we didn't get to see a lot of time, you know, and, and Mitchell Trubisky did the same thing. He played behind Marquise Williams at North Carolina. But I think, I just think, you know, when I watched Webb, he's, you know, he's got the prototypical size. He's got a good arm. I thought he was the best of the quarterbacks down at the senior bowl. So amongst the pack, I don't necessarily think he's one of the best ones, but I think he's just one of those guys that's kind of come on late and is kind of getting the attention that he's due. But, you know, going into Thursday night, I would envision three of the four quarterbacks. I'd be shocked if we don't see that. Um, at least three quarterbacks, you know, go in the first round because, you know, teams need them. And if you don't get one, you're going to really miss out. And uh, like I said, and the exciting part, and I think you may feel the same way, Mark, is just there's so much. This is where scouting becomes fun. This is where visits and all each team's homework really pays a dividend because now you're not saying, hey, we have Andrew Luck here. We have Matt Ryan. We have Cam Newton. We don't have those guys, at least yet, at least how they're perceived. So it's really who do you want on your team? Who do I want on my team? And, you know, how many draft boards go out there? There's 32 of them. And I'm sure if you went through every one of them on the quarterbacks thing, I think you're seeing a wide variety of at least the top two or three in terms of how these teams value them. And I think that's going to play out on Thursday night where, you know, you could see an upset. You should see, you could see a Deshaun Kaiser go before Watson or Trubisky, vice versa. So even Mahomes, I mean, if a team has an itching for him, he's just going to be the first one taken. 
I love the NFL. I can watch any NFL game at any time. Uh, I cover college football, but I love the NFL just as much. But I don't watch it with uh, an analyst type eye. And, and you're the scout. Uh, so when I throw out a team, let's say the Pittsburgh Steelers, since you've got a close eye on them, I don't know what they need necessarily. Uh, when you look at the Steelers, what are they looking for in the draft? And what can we expect on draft weekend? Well, you know, they took uh, Jarvis Jones, they took Ryan Shazier, and then they put Bud Dupree, first-round picks the last three years previous to the last year. So, I mean, I think linebacker is a need, and then it's still a need. You know, Jarvis Jones was gone. Now Lawrence Timmons goes to Miami. James Harrison is not on the right side of, you know, where you want to be as a football player, but he's still one of the starters after going on a little hiatus to Cincinnati. So, I would still say linebacker is the key need. I mean, that defense is predicated on, you know, moving the football or, you know, defending the football through that linebacker position. So, you know, I look at attack McKinley from uh, UCLA. I see Tim Williams from uh, Alabama. I think those guys meet their demands. Um, I, you know, I see a, a lot of Hassan Reddick, and this is kind of where I don't think Hassan is their type guy. Is They like a larger body guy at that outside linebacker spot, and that's where I don't think he fits their need. I mean, uh, Hargrove was a guy they took in, I think, the third round last year. When I did my mock draft last year, I thought they might go de-tackle, and I specifically targeted Hargrove just because of size weight. So that's why I'm going to say, you know, I would say when I see Hassan Reddick, one, I'll think he, I think he's going to go higher than that, but I think he's just too small. If all the line, outside linebacker guys are gone, Mark, I think you just definitely have to look again at safety or the defensive back position. That's still kind of a, a transition mode. Carnell makes kind of, you know, their coach out in the back end of things he's trying to get the most out of some young guys I and mean, they already burns sean davis were fantastic last year but there's still a lot you know to build on ross cockrell they signed a what or up from buffalo he was a fourth round pick has his ups and downs he has his moments sometimes a little bit tempered and uh, makes those ill-advised fouls but uh like i said i think at the end of the day it's going to be defense and i think outside linebacker would be their preference and then you go uh safety or defensive back for the Steelers. College to pro.com is the place to check out. I just started to dive in. You've got player interviews, analysis, scouting reports, all sorts of stuff to dig in and get yourself ready uh, for next weekend's NFL draft. Uh, Bo Marciante uh, and I just uh, getting acquainted here on Twitter in the last few days. And, and Bo, I appreciate you uh, showing up for an interview so uh, we can talk a little football. And based on everything you delivered here, man, would love to have you back. Uh, man, I'd love to come back. I mean, you know, it's just like us talking, uh, you know, the only difference is we don't have some chips and beer where we're just kind of doing the internet thing, right? That's it. You know, what's wrong with ever talking football, right? So what's your, your uh, draft weekend going to look like? Uh, my draft weekend, you know, uh, Saturday is my biggest day. Um, I don't attend the draft. I have before, but um, Saturday's my biggest day in terms of uh, priority free agents, finding out where all the undrafted guys go. So, uh, you know, that'll, that's probably my biggest Twitter day, just, you know, calling all these kids, calling their agents, finding out where, you know, where these guys are going and then just trying to break that news. So, uh, you know, you know, I'll basically take Thursday and Friday in, maybe put some stories out there, you know, but there's a lot of much, you know, I mean, to me, the self side, it's obvious. I mean, you know, Mitchell Trubisky went to the 49ers. I mean, there's really not much a lot to say. He hasn't done nothing except to get selected. So, I don't, you know, I don't, in terms of finding those priority guys, and, you know, I think people like to see those, uh, late round guys. So Saturday is obviously the big day. And uh, like I said, uh, an exciting time, Mark, for all these kids. I mean, uh, I think they've worked their whole lives. And, you know, sadly, uh, some of their careers might come to an end after, uh, you know, playing and having hopes. And obviously, uh, some of these guys' their dreams are going to come true. Hey, Bo, after next weekend, if you can carve some time for us, we'd love to have you back and get your analysis on what happened uh, during draft weekend and specifically those guys that are trying to make NFL rosters uh, on the back end there it would be great. Yeah. Hey, look forward to it, man. Hey, Bo, we appreciate the time. Thanks, Mark. Have a great week.